Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I am here today with the um, board game journals um, and I'm going to be making the covers. So we'll get started on that. So I guess I'll start with Ludo. I'm going to take all the pieces that we sort of hacked apart last time and put them in here. Um, actually, I'll do it for both. Um, Wondrous Wizard as well. Get all those little word snippets that I harvested here. And our game pieces. <laughs> okay, this is just backing, so it doesn't necessarily need to stay with the project. That's fine. Okay. So now we can get into looking at how we want to do the cover. Um, so first thing I want to do is just open up the sides of the box. Okay. Now I do want, I think, to just kind of cut off these sides. So I'm going to do that here. Where is my knife? Right there. Okay. Just going to follow the line. Separate each side here. I'm just jumping right into this project. I hope you're all doing well. So I will keep these bits kicking around for a little while until I decide what I'm making the um, spine with. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using one of these long sides to make the spine. I might just use my big scissors to cut this. It'd be easier, I think. It's just kind of hard to like hold the whole thing here. It's pretty easy to follow the line. So now we've got that. Now let's harvest the other the other box down in the same way. hardest part I think is separating these sides Okay. 
So now I'm gonna get my cutter. And this is where we're gonna decide how, bu how big these will be. So let's start with Ludo, cause I feel like I know where I wanna cut Ludo or where I have to cut Ludo really. And that's in, in between these two. So I don't really have a choice because like, there's no other sensible central place to cut. So here it is. Um, then this side, is it the same? How close to, oh, those are very good. Yes. I don't even really need to mess with this at all. Good. Okay. And then we can decide what we want to be the front cover. It could go this way. It could go this way. Doesn't really matter, to be honest. It's just about picking a favorite. I'll probably use the the front cover though, and I'll probably keep intact the name of the game, Ludo, and then I'll, I'll just cover this here, because that's not actually vintage. This is a, a reproduction game of, of the original Ludo. Um, the other game, of course, is actually from the 60s, this one. So that one's done. Then we need to sort out what we want to do. How do we want to do this? Not so easy. So, um, <laughs> it's challenging, right? So I think like we would get the wizard and the dragon on one side. We probably will lose the owl, but I can use that elsewhere. And we'll get the tree and the, and the title on the other side. Mm -hmm. So I want to leave, um, I'm going to have to kind of like, I think the best thing to do really is to just cut his hand in half maybe, or leave his hand on the other side here because I want a little bit of space here. I don't want to, um, whatever I use on the, uh, cover, I don't want it to impede the title wondrous wizard. Be brave. Just be brave. It's okay. Now let's measure this across. Okay. So it is just slightly over six and a half. Okay. That's decent. Yeah. And so we'll get the dragon. We won't get the owl. As I said, that's fine. We can use the owl somewhere else. That's good. Yeah. So those will be our two covers. So I think I will have this on the front and this on the back. And then we'll decide how we want the spine. You know, what do we want to do with the spine? Um, okay, just give me one moment. All right, so it's time to make a spine for Ludo. Now, I want to um, do this journal in a certain kind of way. Um, I want to make it a, f a flexible, hard cover, but soft cover kind of journal. Um, I'll explain, you'll see how I do it anyways, but I'll explain that shortly. I want to give this um, about a two inch spine, I think. So I'm going to come over here and get my chopper here. Um, then come here to two inches and just chop that down. Then I will measure this and see if it's a, is that a solid number or not. It's sort of like one tick before the six that I can handle. So right there. Is that six and seven eighths? I'm really bad at, uh, I grip on metrics, so I'm not all great at the uh, imperial way of Okay, that'll be the spine for that book. And then what do we have left of this piece? It's not quite, no, it's only an inch and a half. Also, is this piece straight? No, so let's just toss that. I don't want to deal with it. Um, and then I need the same thing for the other book. I've got one more piece here. It looks like a good size, actually, it is. Yeah, it's just over two and it's straight. Is it? big oh it's so perfect what <laughs> why is everything going so good today 
Excellent. Okay, so that'll be my spine for that one. Now I need to um, sort out what I want the spines to look like. So that's the next step. And when I was going to talk to you guys, I said in my last video, I would talk to you about my thoughts on, you know, thrifting, acquiring things and so on. So I want to do that today. So I got to thinking about like thrifting and thrift haul videos because I was having a conversation with one of my friends about how, you know, thrift haul videos, they, you know, are fun to watch. I enjoy watching them. I enjoy making them. Um, but are, do, do they serve everybody in the same way or do some people, you know, feel compelled to thrift when maybe they shouldn't and it's not that helpful for them? So I would, you know, I would like to think that probably, yes, of course, all of that is true. There will always be a scenario where, you know, something isn't right for you and you have to manage it. But then I also got to thinking about like my own personal role in that as someone who makes thrift haul videos and that kind of thing and you know because I tend to care about my audience and not wanting to be a a bad person in their life um not that I think I am I don't think you know doing making thrift haul videos is bad at all I think it's it's you know we all have to be responsible to ourselves to our budgets to all those things right but it's still worth thinking about I don't think anything suffers from experiencing some measured thought you know it's a good thing so I I was thinking about how to kind of personalize my response to this in my own using of things and you know I've been tracking now kind of how much I use things up and also my system of storing the things that I get and it's kind of interesting and funny like um so when I first started journaling or journal making, I decided like I would cut up a lot of different things and I would, um, you know, like different books, like, and I would have an organized pile of say, like, um, you know, birds and I'd, I'd keep them all in a, in a neat bag. We'd have birds, we'd have bugs, we'd have this, that. Actually, I want another one of those bunnies. I threw them away. He needs to come back. Sorry. Oh, and then I, might, well, I don't know. Should I put Ludo on on the edge as well? What do we think? Hmm. This has like the sticker mark on it. I'll have to get that off if I do want to. Let's just work on it. Um. Oh. So, anyways. So I used to organize things in bags, and then since that time, I've decided I don't really like my things in bags. I like them to stay inside the books. So, like. In junk journaling, there's sort of two different kinds of book acquisition acquisition that you do. One is, you know, a journal to has a nice cover. You want to put like an actual whole journal inside it. And the other book is that you're getting it to harvest it for something, be it images, poetry, um, you know, dingy pages, whatever, right? So then that gets broken down a little further. Is it the kind of book that you can, you know, harvest right away, those those ones that you get to harvest, or is it gonna take a long time? Is it a big compendium? Um, and, and also what size are the pages? Can they be pulled out and used as signature folios? Or are they the kind, is it a big, huge book where you'd have to do a lot of, oopsies. See, this is what happens when I'm chatting. Um, again, I don't know if I even, I don't even care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't even want it there. I want another bunny. That's what I why I grabbed this. So, anyways, um, you know, so it, you then start to think about how am I going to use this book? Like, what's the right way to use it? And then there's like kind of a timeline on that too, right? Um, that you have to think about, or you're going to end up with a gigantic stash of books. So, I was thinking, like, you know the the most responsible book for me to buy is a children's book that I can make a storybook journal out of because when I make those I use the entire book up like right away um <clears throat> I don't have um any leftovers it's just literally that's it that was the book so you know that one I get the most satisfaction out of I think just looking for a good background for this Looking at Ludo, we have 
Lots of greenery. Mm hmm. Mushrooms, greenery. Let me think. I'm going to grab something. I'll be right back. Okay, so I grabbed the collection that I'm going to be using in this, this Graphic 45. Um, beautiful collection called Little Things. I do have a few extra pages for it as well. This is not that. This is Simple Stories. Um, but I think what I might do is use one of these mushroom pages on the spine. Because I've got a few of those. I may be slightly hoarding mushroom paper. That's true. Um, so let's just set that aside. Set this aside. We don't need that right now. And yeah, that'll be great as a background. So let's do it. So anyways, <clears throat> so we're talking about the books. Okay, so like, you know, I've got books that I break down right away. Then what I have, I was telling my husband about this and he said, you know, it sounds you actually, like it sounds like you actually have a really good system. I said, well, thanks. Maybe, and that's why like him saying that, I thought I would sort of share. So if we go back to basics, to what I said, you've got two kinds of books. One is the cover you want to use it for a journal two are the guts so um when you know one is easier than the other if you have books and you're you know having trouble storing them because you don't have much space all of your old books that you have most of them don't have a lot of useful stuff inside outside of exactly what you're going to use them for the cover so I would recommend you keep the copyright page. Um, the first, you know, if it has a nice book plate, keep that. Keep any lovely end papers, of course. Um, and then keep a few pages if you like the, you know, the, the first page of the chapter. If it has a, a nice uh, chapter title. Um, keep that. Keep any pages with poetry or word, you know, interesting words. Um, you know, any illustrations, of course, any diagrams that, you know, like this that you want to keep. Um, and then if there's advertisements in the back, as a lot of old books have, I would keep those. Um, but the rest of the pages, okay, if you don't need them for, um, like just having old paper around then I would say toss them don't keep them and just keep the cover with that little bit inside now I know some people have a concern about oh well I don't want to lose the the shape of my uh my book's spine or whatever so you know you'll have to bargain with that if you feel that that's a concern like keeping something like this inside to keep that mushroom head kind of shape of your spine um i would experiment with that and see if there's value in worrying about it or not that'll be personal to you for me i feel like not always but sometimes i will keep a book together for that reason um but you know it really depends on how desperate for storage you are um so then the other thing is like like that pretty much handles the the books you know that you're saving the covers so now the books that you're taking apart so what i do is i no longer will buy a book and then cut it all up into pieces and keep it in a filing system of birds bees whatever i don't do that i keep the books together but i try to be a frequent um like frequently go through my books. If you find that you're someone who likes to use digitals a lot because you can easily, you know, get a theme together for a journal, then maybe consider that that's your thing. That like you don't need to buy so many books if you're mainly using digitals. Because I've had to kind of reckon with myself about that. Um, there's a couple reasons that I've slowed down a little on a lot of digitals like I I do still use them I love them um there's a lot I don't love out there right now that I won't get into but um you know some I really love especially like the people that I you know I do work on their design team love their work um also you know if you see digitals on here frequently from certain makers it's because I love them so 
there's that. Then obviously I am a digital uh, designer and seller and creator. So I use a lot of my own work. Like that's something that I've reckoned with myself as well. Make sure, you know, you use a lot of your own work. That's what you make it for. So um, all of that being said, you know, I think you can organize your books in a way that you can use them better by like just creating sections on your bookshelf like have a children's book section you know an atlases and maps um like you know like a library organize it like that and you will find it's so much easier to to deal with and then try to put your books together by size if you can as well because then you know you don't have like this kind of unorganized calamity of books everywhere so that's one thing i would do and then as you go through journals and you make things okay like look through all your books not all but a lot of your books that seem like they probably have something relevant look through them and pull those things out to create like a, a kit for yourself before you start a journal and then when your books get down to just like a few pages left go through them get rid of the things like I always pull out the first page of a book the fly pages and I keep those with my papers like my plain papers that I'm going to put into my journal um, because the it's a really useful thing to do. Um, you'll, you'll find that like all of a sudden you just have a ton of really cool, you know, materials to put in your journal. So that one's done. And then, um, what you'll then have are just a few pages of either illustrations and things that you want to use or text. So if the pages are folio size like this, like, you know, I would keep them just as they are, but if they're not, if they're huge and you know, um, like, you know, I'm not going to use them at that size and there's only like, you know, between one and eight pages left, put them in a basket and like create yourself like a Tuesday 10 bin especially if you make videos because you will find that it's actually really a quick and easy way to get papers together um, to make ephemera so if you're trying to do you know a video or maybe you're just practicing making say you know um, journal tags okay and you need um, you know, maybe you're using your scraps and you just need a bunch of focal points. Well, now you've got a bunch of book pages from books that you like, but you don't have enough of them or you're not planning on making a theme, but you've got all this stuff, right? That's like good material for a book. So that will help you use up, then throw away that cover. You don't need the cover of that book that like you're not going to use, right? So that's one way to go about it. Um, I find it very like good to just kind of get rid of things that I'm not using. So I try to get rid of as many big book covers as I can. I'm just looking at what I have here for the spine because I was thinking I wanted to make the spine using one of these with the date on it. And I think I might do that, but I want a bigger spine than what this is. So I'm just gonna cut this out. And that I think is the one I wanna use. I've got all of this. So let me, oh, I like the green one more. So I'm not gonna use these ones. Um, I'll keep one, but not two. Just one, we don't need this piece for anything cause we'll use this one. Or actually is this one, yeah, this one's maybe, is this one easier to take apart? Yeah, okay, we'll get rid of that one. But maybe we'll keep it. Yeah, we'll just keep it for now. You never know if I'm gonna wanna use it. Okay, so we'll open this up. Yeah, so then, you know, when you have a book, you've, you've taken the pages out that are just all text. So the all text pages, go through those for word snippets. Like just, as long as the text is big enough, right? Um, because like, you'll probably find that it's really nice to just sit you know, maybe you're watching kind of a TV show, but you're not really into it. Or maybe you're in bed or, you know, you're doing something where you need something else in your hands. Like that's me all the time. Um, so cut out word snippets for your journal. That will be a lot of fun. Okay, so I need to fit wizard on there and I can get most of the owl and I still need some backing paper. So now I gotta decide do I want to use that same yeah I think I'll use the same one let's just do that 
And then, you know, once you've got those papers all sorted out, like do videos or do projects where you make things and just create an ephemera basket where you've gone through, maybe you're using your scraps. So that brings your scraps down. Like it's all kind of a system, right? And do a collage board with scraps, then use those focal points from those pages that you plucked from the book that you only had a little bit left and you created your own Tuesday 10 type bin, like, like I do. Um, totally, it, it does make a big difference because if you count the number of books that you buy versus the number of books journals that you make especially if you don't sell them or or gift them or they don't leave your possession in any way um you'd be surprised right at just how much you're accumulating so just food for thought i'm always looking for responsible ways to kind of keep my hobby sustainable right and thinking in this way helps me so much like i, I want to feel like i have a flow through ecosystem something is thrifted it comes in it gets harvested it gets organized in a way that doesn't take up a ton of my time because i'm not an organizing channel um like this whole conversation started about the things kind of that rob us of our creativity so maybe Maybe we're spending all our time thrifting and we're doing thrift haul videos um, or we're spending all of our time organizing and we're just doing organizing videos those videos are all totally fine but if that becomes all you do and you're no longer making then I think it's kind of a vicious cycle of you know I'm th I've thrifted something I skipped the step of using any of it now I'm organizing it and maybe I'm going to keep skipping, you're skipping the step of, of using it. You know, it, it becomes an ugly cycle that none of us want to get into. I think I, it scares me anyways. I don't want to get into that cycle. So I'm just going to cut the edge off that. Then speaking of edges, I am going to go over the edge of this with a bit of, not black soot actually, um, something else, just maybe vintage photo distress ink um yeah just to cover up the white edge before we go too much further now i know i'm gonna have to trim this a little bit so i'll have to go over it again a little bit of paper flying around so that's okay it's that cut edge So yeah, um, those are my thoughts, I think. That's a relatively, although broken up, kind of complete thought on what I was trying to say about like acquiring things. I've also gotten a lot more picky when I'm thrifting these days about what I bring home. Um, Cause like, if you've already got X number of, you know, atlases, do you need another one? If you've already got a bunch of vintage yearbooks, do you need another one? Like even the books that I buy that have the beautiful vintage covers, they've really got to be stunners now for me to pick them up. If it's just, you know, an old book from the turn of the century and all it has is like the title on it or maybe even a picture of something that I'm not not really feeling like if it had, a, say, a ship on it and I wasn't planning on doing, you know, some kind of a mermaid or oceany magic -y journal or something then I wouldn't get it or if I already have something like that at home like I no longer buy things like Nancy Drew or Hardy Boys or whatever books from the 60s or something because I have a lot of them um, and I'm planning eventually I think to make plain um, writing journals out of them with nice papers and stuff inside I think I'm not exactly sure but I feel like that's what would serve them best that down and we're gonna have a little bit to trim off the edge there oh that's gonna be a nice nice good and yeah I like that I'm keeping this one but not Ludo I didn't feel like Ludo really mattered wondrous wizard does though Ludo I'm almost just kind of like you know, I love, I love these bunnies. Like I'm more just really into the illustration for, for the Ludo. Um, so yeah, I think that's better. And we're going to cover that up too. 
but I do think I'll keep the Ludo here because it just keeps it together like a game kind of book, like which is what it is, right? So now we're getting on to the step where I'm going to create these covers. Um, and I'm doing them in a slightly different way than I usually do, but I have done this before. So I'll do Ludo first because it's a little smaller. So I'm choosing to back it with a fabric, I think. Um, this kind of fabric. And I'm going to need to iron this for sure. Now I need it to be doubled as it is. Like you see, this is a doubled fabric. I need that to be exactly how it is. So this is Market Mix Martha Negley for Rowan Westminster Fibers in Citrus. Um, and so what I want to do, once it's ironed, I'm going to lay down this spine on here. Right there, probably. And then I will leave a little gap. And I will lay down each side of the book. Like so. <clears throat> And that is going to be how we construct our book. Then I'm gonna sew on these pieces and then I'm going to cut, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a border around the edge um, because that will be cute. So I'm gonna go grab the iron, plug it in, and then I will come back and we'll do the rest. Alrighty, I am back with this iron. And we will go ahead and just get rid of the creases from the fold. over here okay that's better put the hot iron away one sec I just keep the iron on a desk like over beside my sewing machine so it's not in the same spot as me so that nothing calamitous happens. That's decent. They're not like hard pressed but I'm not too concerned. It's not going to matter. All right so now we just need to sort of tack this stuff down and I'm just going to use um glue because like just glue stick because um I don't need it to be super super glued down I'm stitching it on and actually I think I'll start with the back cover first so let's get rid of this um sticky page this out of the way for a minute so we can actually glue this down <laughs> there we go and I'm gonna leave a little space there because I think I'm gonna want to tear that again neatly Let's leave about a quarter inch this last cover here okay so when I go to the sewing machine I am going to stitch around all four corners of all three pieces, okay? Um, so that everything is going to be fully stitched down. I'm going to leave a little bit extra here. Now these fabric pieces, I'll keep them because they'll become something that we can use inside the journal as well for making pockets or tags. Because now this is part of our theme.
Okay, so this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just, it's a little bit more manageable now. I can pick the whole thing up and go to the sewing machine. So I'll go do my stitching and I'll come back. So I'm back from the sewing machine. I stitched around all four corners here. And you can see on back here, and I absolutely love how this looks. Now, if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to see this stitching, then maybe you want to keep your fabrics separate, but I love this. I was careful and neat, and I just did it how I wanted to do it. Now, I also did an experiment. I thought about cutting the corners and folding this in neatly, so we would just have a neat edge here. Um, but then I was like, no, I just love this fabric too much. I want to see it on the edge too. So I left a bit there so that I could still do that. So I'm going to just cut, you know, a little bit, not quite a quarter inch after the stitched fabric. Oh, and I should mention after I stitched around these three pieces, I stitched around, you know, the edge giving about a quarter inch again, um, to just get that neat, like little edge. And if you wanted to tuck in your edges, you could so that you get like this kind of where the fold is, you could have folds around too. But I tend to like having a bit of a scrappy, like, you know, section. Now I just need to come in and clean this up a little. because I want it to be relatively even have to be perfect you know it's we're not making a garment and you could certainly use a rotary roller uh, blade if you wanted to but again I I want my journal to look like I made it <laughs> not that it was you know manufactured okay And then we just got to go in and get rid of strings. Now I did triple back stitch everywhere. The beginning and the end of everywhere I stitched is triple back stitched. That's why so many threads because <laughs> we got a back stitch. Okay. And then you can also use, um, your leftover fabric to make the pockets on the inside of the journal. You know, if you want, we have these strips, right? So we could make the pockets. And this is the time if you want to do that, maybe to make them so you can stitch them in before you sew in your signatures. Now, when I sew in my signatures, I don't want to stitch through this. So I am going to be creating um, a, a secondary hidden spine basically for them um so that's going to mean that i've got even more fabric that's going to go right you know kind of along here um so yeah i'll probably be using the same fabric that i'm using in here because i don't want to stitch through but now i have my first soft cover and this is going to be a very nice little journal like i'm really it's going to be fat i'm going to make it a fat journal but it's just going to be a really nice like handheld kind of journal i can already feel how it's just going to be really fun okay so that is the first one why don't we whip up wondrous wizard while we're here too um i'm going to use this green fabric for it this is some fabric i used for a green screen <laughs> And it's quilting cotton. It's very nice. I'm just going to um, get a piece that is a good size. And this one, I'm not going to fold it in half. Um, I only need one length of it because I'm going to put something else on the inside. So essentially, again, just generally speaking, get a good, you know, amount of fabric cut this down and then we'll tear a good piece okay and I'll just fold the rest of this up because I don't want it to get all wrinkly and messy <clears throat> Here we 
All right, move that out of the way. Then over here again, I've got this um, white stitch line at the top. I'm probably gonna pull or cut that off and tear. Usually these are so prized, these lovely stitch lines, but I'm not going to use it today. Okay. Get any of my little threads out of here. And we're gonna do the same thing again. Back cover first, and the wizard's going on the back. Spine in the middle. Okay, so now we need to glue. And the only difference here is I'm not doubling the fabric. The other journal, it's a smaller one and it felt a little more um, like I needed to have the fabric doubled over. This one, not so much. It's a bigger kind of book, so it's all good. This one, what I might do is before I glue this one on, I think I'll stitch the other two on. So my challenge with my sewing machine is that the arm is only so long and it's only about this long. So what I'm gonna have to do when I'm sewing on the other one is I'm gonna have to kind of do this, but I don't like doing that while it's just glued. I like to wait till it's stitched so I don't like bend it up or anything, or it doesn't start lifting and then fall and then I have a whole problem with the sewing machine. Um, so I will glue that one on after and in the meantime, um, I'll take a little break. I'll, I'll get this fully stitched on and then I'll come back and show you what's next. Okay, stitching is done, yay. All right, so let's trim this off the bottom here. It's gonna rip it across. If you do this, make sure you're using a quilting cotton or a good cotton or fabric that tears well because you wouldn't want to like tear up to your cover. And then we'll start clipping all of these threads. Okay. And over here, I'll do the same. All right, and then the top, I don't know. Do I need to trim a little of that maybe? I think I might. Let's go to here, because I don't think it's straight. And I want it to be a little shorter, so I don't know if I can just trim. Will that tear? Yeah, like I want it to go, mm, not really. I'm gonna just have to tear. Or not tear, but cut. So I want to do. Well, I might be able to just. You know what I can do is maybe unweave this side. Nah, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to do something a little different with this because see, it got a little too short there. That's what I was saying. Be very careful when you're trimming. It's not a big deal because of what I want to do. I'm going to have fabric again on the inside. Um, I just didn't want it to look like so straight. I'll be able to fix this. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> I have to share these things with you so you see them, you know. 
I could show it to you all perfect with its second piece of fabric that will go on the inside. Why will I have a second piece of fabric? Because I think I want to use a different, like a brown or something, because I want to layer it, right? So if you look at that, like it's not going to matter, but it's going to look like grass. So I'm just going to try to like fray this a little bit. And then when I stitch the inner fabric on again, you're not going to see any of that. And my reason for this is because this is a plain fabric and um, I don't want to use a paper on the inside of the fabric cover. I want to use more fabric because that's just the kind of cover that I want to have. But again, here we are. And then I just need to go, um, I have to ink these. I forgot to ink these sides. So I'll probably go around. But the truth is I may even end up using some paint on the outside of this cover or whatnot. One other thing that you need to be aware of when you make a cover like this, I've done this before, um, there's a potential that you may find when you put your signatures in, right? So some people will like, other people will not like this edge here being there once the, you know, the signature is in. If you feel like, oh, I don't really like that, then you have an option. Um, you can take, be it lace or even a piece of the same fabric, right? And you can, okay, so anyway, sorry, my battery died. You can stitch a piece of fabric down the side here. And that's why I was saying I wanted to leave a little space here because it will depend on, you know, how it goes if I like how it feels once it's in there. But if I don't, then I have the option, not this fabric obviously, but I'm just using it as an example. I could stitch a piece of fabric or lace right there. I've got some really nice flat green lace that would be great for this. And then you would simply stitch here and here just to, you know, put another cover over those two edges right there. But I may end up not even, you know, needing to do that. We'll see. Um, I am going to layer another, probably brown, maybe even green again, though. I'm going to see how this all looks. Like, intentionally, I thought I'd probably use brown. Um, but I was going to trim these down a little bit more, but I don't think I will because I may end up using green. I'm sort of looking at this and I liked how the double green kind of looks now. I don't know. We'll see when I get there. But the first part is done. This is what I wanted to accomplish today was just getting the covers put together. So now we've got Ludo and the Wondrous Wizard both in their covers and we will be working away. I'll be working away on these. I'm not doing every part of this um, on camera, but this is something I haven't shown, I don't think, before. So I figured I would share it with you so that you can see how I create the covers for these two journals. Um, and we'll keep going. And I'll give you details, like, because, you know, I'm sure some of you are kind of like, oh, well, I want to see what she's going to do with this. I'll give you the details in the next video about them that I do make. Um, and just let you know what I did, right? I won't maybe demonstrate the whole thing. So that's it for me for now. Thanks for hanging out with me while I work on these journals. And I will talk to you all again very soon. Bye for now.